So well, it's such an obvious, it's such an obvious window. It's like it's like when you're driving a car and you can see the speedometer and the you know the the, the oil light and the gas and it's like you have these readings of what's happening in the engine. You don't need to go get a surgery and open up the engine and get in the carburetor. It's like no, we're like it's overheating. Like there's a signal right here. It's just a matter of yes. realizing that you have a display and then having a, a basic understanding of how to read it. Yes, and I, but I think it's still one of my, um, that's something I need to do and that's why I have all these podcasts. Why? Because in medical school, we study dentistry as with, with all the medical doctors, but with the medical doctors, the dentist is just, oh, you're just these dentist guys. They just take care of the teeth. They are not really doctors. It's like in hangover movies. Oh, he's just a dentist. He doesn't really know about medical. And the opposite is also true because a medical doctor almost never looks into your mouth. And they obviously don't do a panoramic x-ray and see inside of your bone yeah. what's really happening there. Yeah. And that's what I teach and what I try to bring to all the, let's say, leaders in the field of health um, that it's finally part of the first initial exam, whether you're a health coach you're an osteopath, you're an, a, a trainer or a dentist or a medical doctor, you should always have an assessment of the oral health at day one. Yeah. Because I've seen patients that have been to 29 clinics and nobody can help them and they did everything they could and they even went to see a shaman. But at the end, they missed the root canal tooth. And I'm not saying that everything is in your mouth, but you should at least look for the obvious things and get rid of them. Yeah before you then do the crazier things and you can't imagine funny funny story is it root cause movie what's that did you see the movie root cause no i'll check it out no, i'll put it down now watch it watch it all right it's going it's going on the list root cause all right i'm on it root cause was um it was on netflix two years ago but a lot of endodontologists that's my colleagues the dentists that only do root canals petition to have it removed and it's basically a documentary about this guy, um, Frazier, who did everything he can for the last 10 years to become superhuman, but instead he got sicker and sicker and sicker. Mm. And at one point, he went to see an innovative, the Innovative Medicine Clinic in New York, and they found just an oral problem, an oral interference is what we say. Yeah. Referred him to a biological dentist. They found a root canal. And from there on, his health started going back on. Right. This is what I see on a daily basis. Yeah. Chronic patients, high-level performers, athletes, so like top-level athletes, if they have a good team, they know about oral interference. But chronic disease or chronic sick patients or top-level performers need a 10 out of 10 when it comes to treatment. Yeah. And they have to have their oral health fixed. And not just in, in terms of, I can bite on my teeth, really look into what's in your teeth. Yeah. What materials, metals, root canals, cavitations, that's really, really critical to get you to the next step. The other question that I was excited about is uh, with when someone gets on, say, testosterone replacement, they will start to notice a change in their jaw structure. Um, what What's going on there that we can see? And even so, so if testosterone levels are high, we can see like there's, there's, there's going to be an association with a more like chisel, strong jaw structure. If hormones are kind of a little wonky, then they'll start to have like that receding type. Their their chin and jaw just kind of blends in with their neck. Is that what the hell's going on there? Do you have any idea what that is? Like, if uh, I don't think it's testosterone replacement therapy. I think it's more if they use growth hormone. Growth hormone, okay. It, whatever, whatever the heck it is, what is it? Like, it's it's a, it's a yeah, magical it's a, connection. There's a there's a disease called acromegaly. This is when people get super big and super tall. I mean, yeah. and they always have these massive jaws, huge fingers, and everything. They have a tumor in their pituitary, producing much too much growth hormone. That's why they never stop growing. And they have this um, um, these jaws that grow. So I can just imagine if you talk about bodybuilders and people that have like something is weird is happening that it should it's probably the growth so when women women yeah. go say like a trans woman ah. becomes a, a, a man and she gets on whatever the whatever the cocktail of hormones okay. and stuff that they're taking you can see a a, a, a very apparent okay. change is in their facial cool? structure yeah that's true uh, i was just thinking about men sorry i didn't think about women that take testosterone yeah. but that's existing. yeah yes obviously and they realize and that's the end and that's not i don't think it's about too much from the testosterone, 
it's more the androgenic part of various probably other substances they abuse mm. stuff like whatever i don't i don't even know what they're taking maybe um, trenbolone or something like that this is um, super androgenic stuff yeah. well obviously the if you go through puberty you get a massive a bigger jaw you get more squared you get more manly and this is also what happens to female that um, misuse um, male hormones or androgens yeah. i don't think that testosterone would do it themselves but I'm not a profi or an expert in this, yeah, okay. but I can see that androgens will do that. And then also everything else, like probably their female parts will also change mm. and not just the face structure. Yeah, amazing. Well, it's just because of the receptors. Like, yeah. You, you change your genetics, epigenetically, genetically by using chemicals. Yeah. And is that a, it's okay if you don't have the answer to this, but is it a specific bone growth? Uh, thing or is it a change in the jaw structure is it perhaps a change in like the global structure of the body which catalyzes a shift in the jaw structure is like that is the actual jaw getting bigger is there is there and it's okay if you just don't know I'm, I'm, that's you know that's fine too i'm just curious i've never too. i've never I've never looked into this but i'm still thinking about how this um obviously you have a higher protein synthesis and obviously you really get more in, yeah you really get more maleish so yeah. probably the bones really the bone structure changes probably due to more activation of the right receptors other enzymes and better repair or build up it's also used to change um, genders yeah. they, they will also use chemicals for this so yes everything changes then yeah. i think you start Kind of like if you're a little kid, you have more growth hormone, you have more peptides, you have more of everything, and you're starting to rebuild and reshape. And the total chemical background I have to pass, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, amazing. Just man. biochemically, that makes total sense. You just uh, get more maleish. Yeah. Then. Well, I really. I mean, I mean, it's possible if you probably if you get have too much estrogen, or you in, you would inject estrogen, you probably get more femaleish. Yeah. I don't know if you if you if it's possible that your jaw will shrink because I think estrogen is really much important for your for your bone structure overall. Well there's even there's even changes um, in perceptible changes in the facial structure of women as they're going through their cycles each month. So when they're Yes, yes. So that's and that's that's like a, like a subtle cue if a woman's ovulating there's that their their facial structure changes and subconsciously you know men slash anybody yes. women you know we're all tracking it with each other as like okay like impregnate that person <laughs> essentially yes. like yes. the deeper mammalian biological cue is like that one yes. you can see this and this is a change of uh, it's more a change of the tissue so i have a good um story for this at a patient she, she couldn't get pregnant and she was already in like thinking about doing the in vitro and all that stuff. and But I had a look into her mouth and said, okay, here's uh, cavitations and this root canal tree tooth. This tooth is on the meridian, at least for your female parts. Why not just have that removed and see what's happening? And I just, what I always did, I removed the root canals, cleaned everything perfectly, and then placed the ceramic implant, put her obviously on the right nutrition and the nutrients to really support the health. And after six or let's say after three months, I had her for a check-in. It's a long time ago. It's probably seven, eight years. And she looked totally different. And I was like, okay, you're already pregnant. I can see that. And she's like, nah. But then she called me like a week later and said, oh, yeah, you were right. I was pregnant because I could see it in her lips because of mm. the, the lips changing in that one month. Mm. Upper lip, if you know, if it looks like they had a hyaluronic filler in there, sure. but they haven't. Right. It's more like pointing like upwards, wow. like a lot of females do. You will see that she's ovulating or getting pregnant because she has other hormones. And sometimes they get more flat because the estrogen goes away when they have their period. They really don't look so good and don't feel so good, probably because they shouldn't be impregnated then. So the nature is really, really fascinating if you start observing these things. Yeah. And I love to do that with patients. Yeah, it's so it's so. Cool. Well, also with everybody. Else. Yeah, it's so cool. I would love to keep talking to you for a, a while, but we got we got to wrap this up. And so, a uh, last little just no just idea thought. It's just so interesting how 
uh, intelligent humans are. You know, and if we get out of the idea that you know we don't know, you know, we're always we, we we've kind of like outsourced our minds into books and into doctors and into stories and into you know other other narratives outside of our our own intuition. But I, I think in fact we can perceive so much information from someone. It's kind of, it kind of comes into like the whole you know what's going on in the world right now with all the, the lockdowns and stuff. Like we. And this isn't, I don't have any, I'm not sharing my opinion on, you know, what the heck's going on or what vaccines or whatever, but you can tell when people are sick, you know, we have yes. that, and we have all this, this various, you know, this plethora of information that gathers it's like, oh, that there's something up with that person, you know, and it's the same yes. way as we can tell when we're sick. And when we are sick, it's like, I, I think I'm going to stay, I'm not, I'm, I don't feel like going out. I don't, I don't feel good right now. You know, we have yes. all this onboard, onboard information that kind of, you know, and that's, inherently what's driving society. And then we have this, the story that we're kind of running the show with technology and this and that, but it's an interesting thing to see how, you know, the mouth is yet another, one of those subconscious bounties of information where it's like, if someone has bad breath, you're like, I'm not into that person. It was disgusting. They were great. Loved yes. their car, loved, you know, great personality, bad breath over, you know, and it's, it's yeah. like, we're, 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 we're always gathering this information, but we kind of, you know, we, we distract ourselves with, with other purple hearings, I think. The mouth seems to be extremely important. Imagine you see somebody and then she looks awesome and what do you say? Like, and then she smiles at you and there's one tooth missing. It's like, oh, right. what the right. hell? Right, over it, done, yeah. <laughs> well, usually if you know, oh shit, something is off with her or yeah. with him because he's rotten from the inside. We know that the problem is because of the general um, population being not so healthy and not so natural anymore, the instinct goes away or the intuition. Mm. So that's the goal for all patients or everybody is basically to get yourself as ha like nature has intended, become a little kid again on every level. That means if you had oral work done, obviously remove the crap because the source needs to be removed. Yeah. But, and also as a practitioner, you need to be more healthy or as least as healthy as possible to help your patients with energy and also see their problems. Because if I had root canals, I probably don't think it's a problem for you because I haven't experienced it. Same with nutrition. If I haven't done 20 years of nutrition, I probably wouldn't know how to um, find you new nutrients yeah. and, or smell you or whatever. But I think if we like kids again, like in terms of our whole health, get back to where we were and then live the right lifestyle, then we're way more connected to the matrix than you think. Yeah. Whereas when you're like full of heavy metals, you're probably not um, connected. And you can see this on autistic kids. Autistic kids are kind of like off the matrix and they're always full of toxins and heavy metals and things. Yeah. And that's why it's so important to get your environment, not just the oral one, but the whole body environment clean, yeah. as healthy as possible. And then obviously in this... I, I don't I wouldn't um, change anything and I didn't want to live 200 years ago but just from a medic from an environmental point of view it's super toxic right now but our bodies are able to adapt and if you use nature again to live with this unnatural vi environment I'd still prefer to leave, live now because I love to have a phone but obviously I know how to put it in airplane mode yeah. obviously I'm not living in Wi-Fi. So use it. now it's more important to to learn all these ancient <laughs> strategies that we have to run out barefoot and whatever yep. because of our environment being so unnatural and or our inhabitants. Yep. Um, if we get that, then I think it's the best time to live in because we have the internet. We can now, look at this. We can just chat here. You, you're in Austin, Texas. I'm somewhere in Germany. <laughs> and normally I would have never met you or just needed to fly. So not everything's bad. It's more like, okay, how can we use the stuff smart and connect with our nature while still using techniques and become the cyborgs or whatever, yeah. but still be as healthy as possible yeah. as natural. Yeah. Love it, man. Um, God dang. I just want to infuse this into people's uh, minds. The, there was, I was reading about magnetite being in the ethmoid bone, which is just superior up above the, the, the upper palate and is uh, perhaps uh, connected to or responsible for or associated to our ability to uh, have like an internal compass. And so in thinking yes. of like other, other potential 
downstream, upstream, whatever connections, issues that could come of, of malocclusion or issues within the mouth. I, I wonder, I don't have any data on this, but I wonder perhaps even something like our, our sense of where the hell we are in the world could be impacted uh, uh, by that. So I just want to throw that into the into the ether. That <laughs> yeah, obviously it could happen. At least if, if something is off and everything is misaligned, then your eyes are not straight yeah. and one is more looking to the inside, the other was, and then you know, the whole posture will change. Right. Your left arm will be bigger than your right arm and you always feel inside twisted. Yeah. Obviously, and, and if, so if people so people should go see a biological dentist. Um, start off, you know. I think I think your book is. I really enjoyed your book. It's all in your mouth. Um, but if someone had obviously mercury is a big thing. If you look up at, at, at images of people that have mercury in their mouths, um, you can see this gaseous release, like like all around their their face. It's like really impressive to look at. So and maybe you know I don't know. I don't maybe maybe that's turns you into a superhuman or something like that. But you can see it off-gassing, and it's very impressive. Um, and obviously, I, I, I doubt it turns you into a superhero. But uh, who, who should be seeking out a, a biological dentist for opinion of what's going on in their, their mouth and their life? In my opinion, everybody should go see a biological dentist. And I think every dentist should become a biological dentist because this is the evolution of dentistry and the next level and it's not contrary to conventional dentistry. It's just basically filling out um, knowledge gaps yeah. and maybe a few more techniques because everything needs to grow and, it, and um, evolution is growing. So we cannot stand still. So this is, if you want to really have some an opinion that goes beyond just drill, fill, and build and what the general dentist is known for, unfortunately then always see a biological dentist. We train biological dentists to become specialists, and but but this is really a tough curriculum, and there's only 40 uh, worldwide right now. Oh, wow. I, I think only one in the U.S. Uh, no, two in the U.S. Oh, okay. And, so maybe not yeah. realistic for a lot of people. Is holistic dentistry the same as biologic dentistry? Is it totally different? The thing is, um, biological dentistry, there's, this is not... Um, you cannot, I don't know the word, you cannot secure this word. Um, oh, it's like a trademark thing. No, no, you can't. So basically everybody could call themselves a biological dentist. That's a bit of a problem um, because they are holistic or biological dentists that will tell you that they do a holistic or, biologic den or biological root canal treatment. Oh, okay. And sure. the way I describe biological dentistry, maybe you could say it's biological dentistry 2.0 and it is the overlap of high-tech dentistry, or let's say high-tech conventional dentistry, functional medicine and health optimization. And the goal is optimal health. And, and this is really special curriculum and there are not too many yet, but still finding a biological or holistic dentist is probably way better than just going to anybody who is just trained from university and still does the silver mercury fillings, the amalgam fillings. Yeah, amazing. So you're always better off in the U.S., there are two. Um, you could check out the IAOMT, the IABDM. That's our, that's organizations that at least train dentists to become smart certified. Smart means they know at least how to remove a mercury filling safely. Because don't go to any dentist and just drill out mercury fillings, the silver black amalgam fillings. Then this will be way be way worse. Mm -hmm. You need to find a skilled dentist to remove that and if you have a look into your mouth later on and there is a black filling in there it's probably mercury wow. so never just drill it out go find somebody who is certified to remove it safely because there's 50 percent of mercury in there and this is really highly toxic most toxic non-radioactive element known to men you shouldn't mess around with it then yes. better leave it in your mouth until you find the strategy to remove it without further hazard so that's really, really important. They're not using mercury fillings anymore, right? That's like that's just. Yeah, of course they do. Of course they do. Oh, this is still, still. This is. Oh, this is. I thought this was like common knowledge. No, 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 no. Um, it is the, in a few countries, like Russia banned it for thirty years. Scandinavian countries wow. banned it for the last twelve years. They did it smart because they just banned mercury in the environment in their countries. Wow. So they cannot put it in the mouth of patients. But mercury, the, it's not possible nowadays to be mercury free overall. It's just not possible because the environment yeah, has need, mercury in it, it's loaded. But the main source for mercury intoxication is still the amalgam ore. 
silver filling. Mm. So you're chronically intoxicating yourself two, point, two to three micron per day of mercury vapor. And that's why you should never do any chelation protocols before you even got rid of the sauce. That's stupid mm. and can place uh, can have bad havoc um, for your overall system. Always remove the sauce first, but do it safely and find a skilled practitioner. Go see this. And I, you can also, mm, yeah, you can probably all every, find everything um, through my Instagram yeah. and Dr. Dong. There's a tab bio in there. In The link in the bio is a tab bio. And if you swipe through this, you find tons of resources. You right. find tons of podcasts, all the articles, the book, the YouTube, every, whatever you need. And you can also DM me and I'll refer if possible. Amazing. All right. I appreciate you so much. I know we've already gone over your, your time. And, um, this is really no lovely. problem, man. It, it's fun. Yeah, I had a great time. I, I knew that it's going to be good, man. If I like, well, how old are you? Thirty-four. Yeah, I thought round about my age. Whippersnapper. 38, so. Yeah. Thirty-eight, I am. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good being. It's good being young. It's funny the idea of young. I think of that sometimes. I'm like, I'm like, when do I get to start to have the excuse of like, I'm, you know, I'm forty and I'm still doing it. Like, can I? I can't do that at thirty-four. Thirty-four is your prime. I guess maybe I feel like it's that number keeps getting pushed back, and then it, it comes into this is kind of like central governor theory, which I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it happens with marathons and endurance races and our perception of how far we are into the race changes literally changes our physiology and our perspective and you know yeah. and, and so i think that i don't think i'm very, I, mean, I guess i think i'm very confident that we have a similar central governor theory happening with our our linear age and our pers our you know our perspective of who we are at 40 who we are at 50 who we are at 70 and if you start to change that which i haven't i'm fine dying at whatever age 180 you know 90 whatever, but I think it's an interesting idea to start to position the, you know, your, 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 not goal, but your expectation of transition out of this body. You're like, what if we just for fun transition to 150? You know, I'd say like, well, okay, cool. When I'm 80, I'm still pretty hot then, right? I'm, I'm still, you know, I still got it. <laughs> Even if it's an illusion, yeah. like why not? <laughs> no, no, you are hundred percent right. I think I just what I always say to friends of mine that are of 40 and it's always about um, how old is your cell age so biological yeah. age versus chronical a uh, chronological age so I'm 38 but my cell is always like maximum 25 if I measure it right and friends of mine who are 40 their cells are 57 or something yeah. so they're already getting old and obviously they are afraid then I, I think it's all about mindset I, I feel like I'm still 15 sometimes or 18 yeah Sometimes I think, oh man, I was just a kid, and then I became a father, and now I'm uh, have to be have to be a, a dad of a kid, and I totally know how, what he's going to. So I think in terms of the change of perspective when it comes to age, with 38 or 34, we're still kids, yeah. and I think with when we get really to 120 or 150, 100 percent, we still got it with 80. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, so much comes back to the story we tell ourselves. It's like if you like run. I lived in Hawaii for a while. If you, you run across somebody, it's like really high on meth. It's like the story that they're telling themselves is that they're really, really strong, <laughs> and suddenly they have like these like super, you know, meth powers. It's like wow, interesting. Is it actually? <laughs> oh, is oh. that happening? Yeah. If you get super strong when you're on meth. I, from my understanding, yeah, you're like pretty dangerous because for that, that time you can be, you can, you know, it's an amphetamine. You can, you can actually, you know, you get more aggressive, but you actually do get kind of strong during that time frame. Similar story. If you, if you have, maybe that's, maybe that's not the best analogy because I don't actually know about like the, you know, the physiology of, of meth, but, um, you know, instances of say a car falls on your, you know, there's something heavy on your kid, you know, and you're this 130 pound woman and you, you're able to pull it off and oh, it's like all of that's in you, you know, it's just based off of the yes. stories that we're telling ourselves. And we have these governors on ourselves to not, you know, hurt our, you know, our yeah. bodies. But, you know, I think there's also perhaps an, an excessive limitation, you know, that, that we often have and, and what, you know, winding back of what that is and where that comes from. That's a whole nother, you know, episode. <laughs> well, interesting. For example, if you does, when you get tortured, the, Strongest muscle in your body? Did you know what it is? Jaw, right? Mandible? Yes. Yeah. Jaw muscle. I think you can pull up to, I don't want to lie here, but if you're tortured, 
400 kilograms, so it's easy to bite through an arm, for right. example. Yeah. Yeah. Like extreme. Obviously, you're conscious. If you're conscious and you don't get tortured, you wouldn't bite as hard. Yeah. But you can. Sure. It's really insane what your body can do. Yeah. I'm like you. Like I'm open-minded for everything that's happening, and um, that's possible. Yeah. I stay curious every day, so I'm more like I don't know nothing, and I learn new things every day and experience new things. Yeah. That's the fun part, actually, of what we do. Bye. Well, I-